How's it going, everybody? Have you ever found yourself thinking about your favorite movie or series and caught yourself playing the main theme in your head? Or maybe you were watching an iconic classic and you started singing along to the main theme as it was playing, you know, despite the fact that there aren't actually any words in the thing that you were singing. And I'm sure at least a handful of you have wondered, well, how does this happen? How can a piece of music become so memorable without any words to remember it by? And how can a single theme or idea capture an entire movie or series worth of emotions? Sure, scores and soundtracks don't really rely on just one theme for their entire runtime. And sometimes the main theme of a work isn't even as iconic as the other parts of the soundtrack. But every once in a while, you'll come across a piece of music that just kind of blows you away. One that makes you think back on the work it came from with fondness, even if the work that it came from wasn't anything worth talking about. And whether you understand how it works or not, that single piece of music somehow managed to capture all of the emotions despite how many twists and turns it might have had. And so today, I'll be starting a new series where we delve deep into the iconic main themes that essentially made the works they were meant to support. So sit back, get comfortable, and enjoy the sounds. This is Setting the Tone. <laughs> I rarely come across anime that I consider to be 10 out of 10s, especially when it comes to newer shows and movies. Maybe it's because I'm jaded and try to compare everything to the handful of 10s I've already given out, but even when I love a show enough that it probably could be a 10 to a lot of other people, I still usually give it a 9, and the reason tends to be fairly ambiguous. So you can understand my surprise when, after watching Uchu Kyodai for the first time during Covid summer, it became the 6th 10 I'd ever given to an anime, third for a series, and the first one I'd given in six years. But ignoring my bad taste in anime and almost entirely arbitrary scoring system, what really sold me on the 10 out of 10 for Uchu Kyodai wasn't its realistic and well-rounded characters, nor its impossibly well-researched plotline, or even its fantastic writing overall. It was the music for the show, which I still can't listen to without tearing up. It's almost nostalgic hearing those beautiful notes again and again, despite having only heard them for the first time half a year before this video came out. And what surprised me so much was that the composer, Watanabe Toshiyuki, was someone I had never even heard of. The last time a composer I didn't know blew me away like that was with ReZero's Suehiro Kenichiro back in 2016, four years before all of this. Anyway, that was all a long tangential way for me to say that this is arguably my favorite anime soundtrack of all time, and the biggest reason is because of this beautiful track. This is one of the many variations of the aptly titled Main Theme of Space Brothers, and while it may not sound that amazing if you haven't seen the show, it's the association it has to the show that makes the theme such a work of art. That doesn't mean it isn't a beautiful standalone piece, however. Case in point, I was working on the script at my parents' house and my mom heard the music, walked into my room to tell me it sounded really nice, only for me to disappoint her by saying it wasn't something I'd written. I'm sorry, mother, I'll be better. Uchu Kyodai's soundtrack has no less than nine variations on the main theme across the soundtrack's three-hour runtime, and far more short quotations of the main six-note leitmotif than I could find and keep track of. And for a show that ran for 99 episodes, had a prequel movie, and had a live-action film made, becoming one of the few manga franchises that most non-otaku Japanese people recognize, A1 Pictures did not hold back in making sure they brought on on a composer they knew could handle the gargantuan task of writing music for the anime. The calm version playing right now is the simplest version of the theme, and is likely the one that most people will think of when they think back on the show. It opens with the six-note leitmotif played by the clarinet in D major, playing in pairs of two going A-D, A-E, F-sharp, A. -E, F -sharp -A. 
The first four notes of this pattern are especially important, as this is the cue for the listener to reaffirm that, yes, this is the story that they've become invested in. The perfect fourth followed by a perfect fifth is not only a representation of a step forward, it also contains the heroic sound often used in superhero films or triumphant character themes. It might not sound very heroic in this slower version, but we'll take a listen to some variations later where this feeling becomes much more apparent. The leitmotif then echoes itself, but rather than ending on A, the F sharp is followed by D, taking a more stable step to the tonic for a feeling of hopefulness while still retaining the same basic melodic shape. Where the drop down to A is more of a roundabout circular motion, the step down to D is a step forward, implying the first small step in the journey of a thousand miles. Or in this case, the small steps from Utta and Hipito that will lead to the huge leaps for mankind. This small pattern is merely a tease, however, as the strings come in a bit heavier and the flute repeats the leitmotif before dropping down to D, ending with a small step up to E as the clarinet descends from C to D. This is the figurative and literal gravity of the stage that they both are at when this track first plays. Two boys dreaming of one day reaching the moon in space with nothing but hopes and ambitions to guide them. The oboe then repeats the clarinet's pattern, but it's then followed by a rising figure that stumbles a bit on G and F sharp before finally managing to climb up to the A an octave above where it started before coming back down to D. It may have ended a step back from the height of its ascent, but not before taking two steps forward from where it began. Seeing a pattern yet? This then gets repeated in the violins, but this time the melody takes a huge octave leap up to the high D, falling to the A but not without landing one small step up to the B. The horn supports these higher melody lines by echoing them in the lower mid register, providing the push from behind to support the boys in their pursuit of the final frontier. And then there's a shift in the music as the whole ensemble moves into a rising figure from an E flat major 9th to an A flat major 11th then a G flat major 9th to B major sharp 4, making full use of the dissonant sharp 4ths, 9ths, sharp 11ths, and occasional 6th in the melody to represent the bumps and stumbles that occur on the path to the top. And full disclosure, I'm almost certain I identified some of these chords wrong because theory is a game of semantics that I just don't like playing. These stumbles eventually land in the key of G major, utilizing the stumbling figure on F sharp and G from before as a starting point for the new melody that follows a similar two steps forward, one step back structure. As this repeats again in the strings, the ensemble then swells and surges up to the high C before making a powerful descent in the form of F over A to C, then E flat over G to B flat, and finally ending on D, allowing for a final echo of the six note figure around D in the key of G. The ending might not sound any different from the beginning without analysis, but it's incredibly smart writing to have the same echoing leitmotif repeat in a higher key, utilizing the entire piece as a whole to represent the ongoing two steps forward, one step back pattern that occurs within the smaller parts. 
What works so well for the light motif is that it's also incredibly easy to pick out at any given time, as it's simple, singable, and always filled with hope. And in a story about a pair of astronaut brothers, both aspiring and current, hope is everything that the story needs. It's one of those dream jobs that kids want to do when they grow up, but the actual road to making it a reality is more difficult than almost any other. The theme outlines the sense of wonder just as well as it represents the difficulty of pursuing one's dreams in earnest, something that makes all too much sense for Muta, Hibito, and all the other astronauts in the show. Now you might be thinking, okay, it's a pretty fitting theme, but how can it have nine different versions? Let's explore that, shall we? <laughs> The example we just analyzed was shimatte atta omoi, feelings stored away, and is used to address Mutta's mindset as his passion and love of space are reignited in the pursuit of becoming an astronaut. That was the much more dreamlike, boyish version as Mutta regained his drive, but this one is much more grounded in the reality of doing so, with the low horns and double basses demonstrating the imposing nature of such a dream. It's still a dream full of hope, but the road to reaching such a state is more than just a mountain. The trumpets are representative of the hero's journey, used often in film scores to represent the resolve and strength of the protagonist, and the electric guitar adds some cool modern vibes to keep it hip with the kids or something like that. Mostly it's a representation of the childhood dream taking form through adolescence into adulthood. The instrumentation also gives it a much more heroic feeling than the simple woodwinds we heard earlier, with the strings doubling or simply supplementing the main melody at a higher register, reminiscent of the endless sky flying high above the currently earthbound protagonists. <laughs> This one is pretty self-explanatory. We've taken off, the tempo is kicked up, and the rocket is barreling its way into space. Destination? Moon. Or ISS, depending on the context. The brass instruments and electric guitar take the lead while the electric bass and drums chug along to provide a steady rhythm that keeps the group together. The strings are no longer sentimental instruments carrying aspirations, but rather dreams flying along with the crew, taking the melody and embellishing it with quick upward runs like little fireworks launching and bursting in celebration of the realized hopes of our protagonists. This sounds similar to the first example we heard, only now there's something of an upward lilt to it. We're starting in the key of A major, a perfect fifth higher than the D major we've become accustomed to, which takes advantage of the heroic sound of the perfect fifth in a much broader sense, as we've already landed on our higher tone and are now taking it one step further from there. Mutta's sense of elation is brought back to reality as the key drops down to F major, still keeping a higher tone than the original D major while recognizing that, while this is a huge milestone, the ultimate goal of reaching the moon and beyond are still a ways away. Yet this feeling of ecstasy can't really be contained, as the orchestra swells to the climax in an explosion of joy and relief that all his efforts have finally managed to pay off. What was once a stumble over F sharp and G on the road to the top is now a memory of the exploits that helped him reach this point. And the final repetition of our familiar leitmotif in the French horns ends with a step up from the G to C, replacing the final two notes that would normally make a step downwards with one last triumphant step up. There is no more stumbling or stepping back in this moment, only one giant leap forward for the newly appointed astronaut. Here we have the final variation of the main theme on the soundtrack, and it perfectly captures the sense of what both Muta and Hibito are feeling by the end of the anime's runtime. The piece begins in what was originally the second section of the main theme, with the stumbles in the key of G major having dropped down to D major. 
Given Hibito's circumstances following his first moon mission, this lower, more melancholic take on what was once a hope-filled track makes sense, as the system seems to have worked against him returning to space. But then the music shifts as the French horns take over the melody, shifting the key into C major without warning, as if giving a supporting shove from behind, springing the melancholic D major back up to G major where it should have been all along. This allows the piece to continue on as it should have, returning to D major for the final section rather than adopting what would have been the melancholic lower relative A major the intro was originally heading towards. Where the original theme had the dramatic swell that ended with the track reaching a higher key than it started in, this one ends with numerous repetitions of the six note leitmotif in D major, the key that we've established as the home key from the beginning. In the final few bars before the ending, the horns play this leitmotif while the high clarinet and flute interject with the stumbling figure over C sharp and D. This call and response demonstrates the heart of what the story reaches by the end, with Muta as the horn sending his support to Hibito, whose fall from grace has him stumbling once more to find his footing in a world that doesn't seem to want him anymore, or more specifically wants him so much that they don't want him to leave. But through this back and forth, it is Muta's supporting horns that have the last say, landing on the octave rise up to A, basically declaring that he's waiting for the day that he and Hibito can stand on the moon together as brothers in space. Space brothers, if you will. You can sort of expect that artists don't really think about all the technicalities of what they're actually doing once they've reached such a high level of craftsmanship, and so I don't really think that Watanabe even realized just how ingenious this theme was when he was coming up with it. I'm sure he must have put in a lot of time and effort into figuring out how to best express the heart and emotions of the characters in the story, but to realize it in such a way that it could be used to express all of the ups and downs in the lives of the two brothers without knowing how well it it would come across is beyond what I could have ever expected when I was going into the show. And as a fellow composer, I can only hope that one day one of my works can be just as incredible as this theme. But what did you guys think of the theme of Space Brothers? Is it enough of a plus to bump the show up to a 10? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons for more content like this. I've got a few more show themes that I'm planning to cover in future episodes of Setting the Tone. But if you guys have any suggestions or you want to see me cover something, make sure to let me know down below. And don't forget to support me over on Patreon because, hey, there might just be a perk that lets you vote on these kinds of things in the future. Thanks as always for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.